Bro, stop coding. What? A AI is getting so good, they, they, they say it's going to replace us. Replace us? We've built an entire company just using AI. Customer support for Startup 13. How can I help you today? Why does everything have to be blue? And someone clicked the phishing email. We are so screwed. We, we don't offer refunds. I'm sorry. We need to change the border radius here. We, we, we should have used TypeScript. Uh, hello? Boom. No, no. Guys, we need a meeting right now. Did AI just turn me into a manager? AI is not going to replace us. AI is going to make it easier for us to replace everyone else. So I'm going to show you in this video how I use AI to code 10x faster. First, I'm going to show you how I set up my code editor. Then I am going to show you how I use AI because uh, I have built 30 startups using AI. 80% of my code is written by an AI and I also use it for advanced stuff like high level thinking and design. And finally, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to get the most out of AI. Okay, so I use Cursor AI as my code editor and that's the only place I do AI stuff. I don't use Lovable, I don't use Vizier, I only use Cursor. I am using the LLM Cloud 3.5 Sonnet at the moment. It's really good for every task. It's pretty fast. I love it. And I also have specific instructions that I give Cursor. So in Cursor, the settings, Cursor settings, there is a part that's called rules for AI. This is where I instruct the AI exactly how I want it to behave. And if for some reason the AI results are not uh, really good, then I keep refining the rules for uh, the AI until it trained perfectly on my preferences. It is specific for my text tag, but uh, if it helps, I'm gonna copy paste this into the description of this video. Okay, now, as I said, I use AI for absolutely everything from just writing one line of code to having an entire brainstorm about the project architecture. And so I've divided this in a few uh, categories. The first one, inline, um, this is where you press comment K and you can uh, write any instruction here. I use that usually when I want to do a little fix in CSS. So I'm using Tailwind CSS and it's really good at making uh, Tailwind CSS classes from scratch, like specific classes. Another uh, feature I really love is when I copy an SVG from an HTML page and I want to turn it into a valid JSX for React. Uh, this is actually just the perfect uh, way to do it. I find these uh, inline instructions to be faster than the chat. So uh, whatever, it does not need any specific context. Uh, then I will just use this inline instructions. All right, one of the core feature is the chat. So this uh, little thing here that pops up on the right side when you press command L. I barely use it for coding because I find it kind of boring to always have to all the time uh, scroll through the entire stuff, apply to uh, the code and then check that it's was actually added to the code. I feel like it's taking time. Sometimes you make mistakes when it applies the changes. So I use the chat mostly for high level thinking. Uh, for instance, this is one of my uh, projects where I collect uh, feedback from customers. And um, the more upvotes it gets, the higher the post is supposed to go. Now, based on who created the post, is it a regular user? Is it something that was created a long time ago or is it created recently? Uh, there are a bunch of ways to sort those posts, not just by uh, the actual number of upvotes, but by many other criteria. And this is just just like a little side project of one of my projects, it would take me so much time to come up with a great algorithm. So I would use the chat in order to give a few information like, hey, I want to change how those posts are sorted, like a, a don't code, but just suggest like a, the architecture of how we can implement that. I give some of the instructions I want. And usually it comes up with, um, sometimes it's not the final results, but it comes up with really good ideas. And then I mix match this and uh, what I want to apply. And then eventually I come up with proper instructions so I can code it later. Another excellent way to use uh, the chat is to chat with the entire code base. We're gonna talk about context later, uh, but things like, is there any way to make my API endpoint more secure? Is there any flaw inside of my API endpoint? Some, sometimes there are days where I create like five or 10 API endpoints. And uh, it's it could be kind of easy to miss one line to check if the user has a proper session or something. Uh, the AI is just so good at code review to make sure that I ship my apps with less bugs. Okay, whenever I need the AI to write code for me, which is 90% of the case, I use the Composer. Uh, the Composer, you can pop it up using comment I, and then it looks like the chat, but it's actually a Composer. And normally, if you see it's a Composer, there will be written agent here, so it's an actual agent. Uh, you can do stuff like uh, go on the web and search for documentation, but the reason I like it the most is because you don't have to apply the results. It's basically like a smart AI that is going to try to apply what you said, see if it works, and then come back and keep changing until it works as expected. So if it needs to create a a new file, if it needs to install a library, you can run uh, your terminal, it's going to update the files, etc. And I just wait, do nothing for a few seconds, and then it came up with normally something that is pretty good. Usually, the better the instructions I give, which I usually get from the chat, the better the results I'll get with the composer. Um, I'm shooting this on February 21st, 2025. I don't know when this video goes out, I don't know what's going to happen with AI. 
but one of my guess is that this will get only better and better. It will get so good at some point that it will test itself. It will have like a place where it can check if the changes were updated correctly, like a sandbox, an environment, and update the results automatically until it's exactly what the instructions said it should be doing. And finally, my favorite feature by far is design. Uh, I know there are a bunch of tools out there like Versal, V0, Lovable, Bolt, etc. I don't use any of these because I want my code editor to design for me because it knows my code base, it knows how I name my files, it knows my color palette. I want cursor to design for me. And guess what? This is actually possible. So what I do when I want a new design, um, I would go to a popular website and I will pick the components I'm searching. So in this case, I'm looking for a search bar. Um, I like this little search bar here, so I'm just gonna take a screenshot of it. And then inside of cursor, you can just drag and drop the image. And you can just ask cursor to recreate this component and make it work with your API endpoint. And so this is a very dirty prompt. I, <laughs> I really didn't spend time working on this one. It was just for this video, uh, but I actually check it out and it is working. If I search for sales. So of course the design here is not very beautiful because uh, well, I didn't give any instructions, but I would normally put it, I don't know where, somewhere in the top left, but it's actually working. This is crazy. It even have a little effect of like, this is just crazy. It adapted these components uh, that I found from Material UI to my website. So those are my colors, those are my borders, those are the, the, the constraint, the designs constraint I use for all of my other uh, components. And so crazy because the agent actually couldn't find everything, like it struggled with something and then it fixed itself for some reason and then it created the actual components, the API endpoint, the CSS animations effect, like this is honestly, it feels like cheating, it's crazy. Garbage in, garbage out, <laughs> as uh, the saying goes in AI. So here are some tips I use to get the best results with AI. First, it's about naming everything. Uh, actually, in programming, naming is the hardest thing to do. You want your files, you want your API endpoints, you want your components to be named in a way that is easy for you and an AI to understand. For instance, for all of my projects, every time I have a React component that is a button, that's a physical button, then I will name it first button. And then the second part will be like, for instance, if this is a button to delete a post, it's gonna be called button delete post. Then the variables I create inside of the button are also uh, very explicit. So it's easy to understand that this is a Boolean because it has is and loading because likely it's gonna call an API endpoint, so it's gonna be loading. All of my API endpoints are also explicit. So for instance, for slash API slash post slash search, I know that I am going to be searching for post. This is really good because it helps the AI come up with better results because it understands your code base more easily. Tips number two is about the context. What information do you give to the AI? This is probably the, actually the most important because the more context you give, the better the results you'll get. In my case, it's kind of easy because I have built over 30 websites sites and I always, always reuse the exact same code base. So my uh, Tailwind CSS classes are the same, my components are all the same, my text tag is exactly all the same and I just clone my code base and then the AI already has foundation so we can easily uh, build stuff on top of it and whatever it's gonna come up with will be likely uh, a good fit for the actual project. If you don't have a code base, if you don't have context, uh, what I recommend is you is use one of those like a lovable uh, V0 Bolt tools in order to come up with your first initial code base. Build a project with it and then reuse that every single time for all of your ongoing projects. And finally, uh, the rule of 80-20, it's again uh, February 2025. Right now, AI is generating about 80% of my coding outputs, but I still spend around 20% of my time uh, reviewing the code that has been made by the AI and tweaking uh, the little details until it gets better. There has never been a better time in history to build a science project. Now you see you have an AI that can code for you super fast, that can help you with like high level architecture, design, etc. But now AI can also help you with like legal stuff. If you need to open a company, it can help you with uh, generating smart marketing ideas. It can help you uh, write content for internet. It can also help you come up with creative thumbnail like the one you saw and clicked. So use AI all the time. Now you can build a one person company with hundreds of AI agents to help you with absolutely everything. Until the next video, I hope you keep shipping. This is the thumbnail I was working on yesterday. <laughs> I hope it was worth it.